welcome back. Hello, welcome to Nintendo Nostalgia for our E3 2021 reactions episode. We are here with everybody that was able to make it. Um, so guys, why don't we start going around? We'll go, everyone just say your name and we'll uh, dive right into this show here. So uh, I would say it's me, Jacob, able to hear you for E3. Um, to my right, we have Josh. Joshua Taylor from West Virginia. You know <laughs> Next up, Jesse Armstrong, Robbie Hutchinson, Craven Jonas, Tony Hutchinson, Kyle Martin, Zach Adams, and Brian Black. Paul Martin. And on the other side, digitally, we have Chris Warren from beautiful, luscious New Jersey. Awesome. And since Chris is not actually able to be here physically, besides his bomber man uh do, doppelganger um look it up chris is going to help guide and lead the conversation here he's got a list of everything we're just going to go around the house well really what we thought about the presentation um our initial reactions and the nintendo what our appetites are not so uh chris take it away man all right well the show started off with a huge bang well i guess it depends on who you ask really but uh, the Smash reveal was the very first thing shown for the Nintendo Direct. And in this preview, we saw that Tekken's Kazuya Mishima is coming to Smash Ultimate. That's right, everyone predicted <laughs> No, not really. So, um, uh, I guess I'll go first with like my impressions. Um, I think it's fine. Um, I didn't expect it, but... Um, it kind of makes sense. I mean, Namco Bandai is making Smash Brothers or Smash Ultimate at least, and they probably are pro like nudging Sakurai, like, "Hey, you know, can you <laughs> give some exposure to our our fighting franchise?" So I'm fine with it because all the other possibilities are kind of lame. So uh, yeah, that's what I got to say about that. All right, Kyle, since we're in the room here, uh, we've got Chris. Cast his, his uh, opinion on this one. What do you think about the Smash reveal? I thought it was cool. I mean, they already got big fighters from the other big fighter games like uh, Ryu and uh, Terry Bogart. There's another one, right? You yeah, want to count Ken, Ken yeah. yeah. Ken. So, yeah, adding the Tekken guy, I think it's pretty cool. It didn't move the needle for me, but I still appreciate it. There. Yeah, it's kind of what I think, too. Um, I thought it always would be nice to have a Tekken rep, uh, or fighter. Honestly, I'm just glad it's not another sword fighter. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's cool. I didn't move the needle for me either, but I appreciate it. It was cool. Um, personally, I mean, I, I'm just glad to see some more variety in there. I thought it was cool to have them in there. I pretty much have everybody who I desperately wanted in Smash. You know, last time we did... Me through direct like this, it was Banjo Kazooie that got in along with Hero, and I was to the moon, you know. And uh, at this point, I just want to see less sword fighters, and I was cool with this pick. Um, and I think it's officially the it was pretty funny to me how they threw Cat Falcon in the lava and just put the middle finger up to a bunch of F Zero <laughs> fans right there. So that's what I thought about that. Yeah. So um, on the on the Captain Falcon. I, I, I'm on another F Zero kick, especially after getting to play AX again yesterday. And that made me mad because it was the only time we could have seen him. I, I mean, at least we saw him and existing. And yeah, wow, yeah, great. <laughs> um, but no, I think thankfully they didn't show that with Banjo or anything. Yeah, um, true. Yeah, it didn't. I think like everybody else, it didn't really move the needle in a world where apparently Western icons don't exist, <laughs> like Crash, Rayman, Scorpion. I, the list goes on. I can appreciate it, I guess, because. Not another JRPG character, I guess. But it's okay. I don't know who he is, but it could be worse. Yeah, could be worse. Could be worse. Yes. Oh, it wasn't Master Chief, so disappointing there. But uh, cool, it's uh, Tekken player. Um, so that's neat. Um, seeing some stuff online. People wondering how are they going to get all of his moves in the game. Um, but, uh, overall, pretty cool. Uh, so by far, if the hype wasn't so set up, you would have one of the funniest like um, introductions by far. Yeah. With well, just everything that's come before this, like the hype was just too high. So I think people were still like processing it while his video was going on. 
Um, I like that there's a second representation. It's kind of sad because that we have two Namco representations now with Pac-Man and him. So we're probably not getting Lloyd at this point, but we can still see because we don't have Lloyd uh, by the costume. Uh, so I don't really care for Tekken. Uh, it's another Ryu type character. It didn't really do anything for me. Uh, would have preferred someone like Crash Bandicoot or Master Chief, Doom Guy, or any of those guys. Uh, those are my opinions. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna sound like broken record. Not really too pumped or excited, but just another. I like playing Smash with my kids uh, that I teach, and just another character for them to beat me with. So. <laughs> uh, as far as me, I'm excited uh, that it is a Tekken representative. I love that's my favorite fighter uh, besides Smash Brothers. So you know, a Tekken represent representation is awesome. I'm glad they didn't just do Heihachi. Um, I like him as a uh, a me fighter. Um, so I'm glad that they did that one. I'm surprised they didn't do Jin, uh, but you know, uh, he's you know pretty cool. I mean, he's he's a part of the Mission Clan and and. Uh, I'm a little leery of the whole, like, everybody has, like, an alternate, like, form or, like, some kind of, like, hyper mode or something like that. You know, you've got Arsene uh, with Joker and, like, I just, I don't know, like, you've got this, like, this hyper mode that they can all go into. Like, a lot of characters Smash characters do. So I'm a little, like, leery of that, but also it perfectly fits um, with Kazuya and the uh, the Devil Gene. So, I mean, that's... It's kind of like natural that, that happens. It's part of that character. Um, I just thought it was kind of like, man, they're they're doing that whole like for a bit, a little bit, you can tap into this mode and and go like really strong and harder to hit or what have you. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how they do that and how they make it different. And I think it could be really good. Um, I'm hoping to see some some of the other characters represented as like uh, just you know stickers of like that music is going to be great. Um, and I'm I'm pretty sure that we're going to be getting Lloyd. As a finally getting it, Lloyd as a uh, Namco, uh, Bandai Namco uh, Me Fighter costume. So that probably covers that in that pack, but we'll see. Um, fingers crossed, but you know, I'm happy that it's second, honestly. If they're gonna take away Lloyd, like at least you know, they've got something for me that I really enjoy. So, yeah, if, if I may add one thing I forgot to mention during the trailer, it was I, I thought it was funny when Kirby got thrown off and pulled back on, like. <laughs> But um, it, it was also funny where I was like, oh, man, they threw Captain Falcon off in this. We all sounded disappointed. And then Marth got thrown off in like half of his tears. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I like um, Fire Emblem OK, but yeah. And how about that Breath mm -hmm. of the Wild troll with Thurin Ganondorf off at the oh, very beginning yeah. there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, what is all that they did it on purpose? <laughs> yeah, I was probably going to get like scalped from Ganondorf or something. <laughs> all right. All right. Chris, do you have any other follow-ups or do you want to move on to the next one? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was also pretty funny that um, the arms character's arm was, like, still on the cliff, and he had to, like, knock it off. <laughs> it was just a subtle little sense of humor thing. Um, but also, yeah, just kind of wanted to add that it is nice, like Ryan said, that there is, like, a Tekken rep. I think it, it's a franchise that has mysteriously been absent, mostly on, like, Nintendo consoles, or, like, we've gotten, like, not the best versions. And I'm not a huge fighting fan, but it's really important that we have that type of franchise on a Nintendo system. So it's pretty exciting that there's potential for that there. Um, yeah. But um, unless anyone has any other comments, I'll move on to the next announcement. Um, the next announcement was Life is Strange, True Colors, and the Remastered Collection. So for me, this is a franchise I've always heard of. I know literally nothing about it. This is the first time I've even like seen it. Um, but I hear very good things, and um, hopefully it's good. Hopefully the reviews are good, and it's something new to dig my feet into. But that's all I have to say about it. All right, Kyle. Yeah, I'm stoked for it to come to Switch. I've been wondering for a long time why it uh, didn't come to Switch, because it's already on iOS and PlayStation. I'm not sure about Xbox. But yeah, I'm stoked for Switch players to get it. Um, I have heard of this series, but have never played it or anything, but it looked great. I love story-based, choice-based uh, games and what those can become. I may have to pick it up. It uh, looks really interesting. I'll say that. Um, I've never heard of it. I mean, I guess I have, because I said Life is Strange, which I heard the name, and it just sounded right. 
I don't know what this is at all, but I mean, maybe it's the Undertale side of me, but not like this is going to be Undertale, but I just love a game that does get you in the, in the feels, your emotions, and I, that's what I heard, and it actually looked really good. So um, I may pick this up. Uh, it, I, I'm very interested. It, so I'm, I'm indifferent on how I feel about it because I don't know anything much about it, but what they say is true. It seems like it might be really good. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can say a whole lot about it because all I'm going off of is that trailer. But I mean, if it's a good story focused sort of game that I mean, your decisions matter, you know, I'll be willing to take more of a look into it, mm -hmm. perhaps down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of the same with everybody else. I have, haven't heard a whole lot about Life is Strange. Um, heard a lot of people praise it um, that do play it. And it looks really good. So, cool it's coming to Switch. Not exactly my cup of tea, but I'm happy for those who enjoy it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not really big into story focused games, except for maybe a couple exceptions. So it's not something I'm going to be getting. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just indifferent. I don't. I don't yeah. really have any strong feelings. I might get it. Depends on. I'll, I'll need to see a little more here recognition from you guys before I decide to pick it up. Fair enough. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about this one too. Um, I really like the idea of those like choose your own adventure, your decisions causes like something else to happen and that influences the story. And this game, at least the first game, is very much like butterfly effect focused. So like you can like kind of manage time, you can like rewind time, but every time you do something goes wrong or something is, is completely thrown off, and it's like kind of irreparable. Um, and but there's like a deep story behind that, and then um, the the third one in the series that they're going to be coming out with is more of like a, an emotion based, like you can influence people's emotions and read their emotions, kind of like an emo mancer type thing. Um, so I really like that that's coming too. I would didn't expect the third one to come, but I I would you know I kind of saw like the uh, the one and two coming to switch. Uh, but the fact that we're getting all three is just stellar. Um, I'm really really happy about that just to experience that story because i've heard nothing but good things about that some people that's like their favorite story in video games and it's very much beloved chris yeah it's it's awesome that we're getting um a bunch of variety on the switch and that everything is coming to the switch that's exactly what we wanted from the beginning the system was announced and that's exactly what we're getting so it's just pretty cool uh, next up is Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, which was very unexpected. Um, I don't know if anyone saw the uh, Square Enix uh, E3 presentation, but that was shown off there, I believe. And I was very impressed by that. I was talking with Tom Qualls about it, and it looked pretty good. And I'm very surprised that it's coming to Switch, because that does not look like a Switch game. That looks like a PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 game. It looks luscious. and I'm curious to see, like, is it going to be a game that's going to be, like, optimized on the Switch Pro if that ends up get, being announced? So, um, yeah, I'm just very surprised that it's on the Switch. Um, does it appeal to me? Eh, I don't know. I'll see how the reviews are. Looks okay. Um, I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. But um, Guardians of the Galaxy is a great franchise. I uh, love the movies. And um, I don't know, it seems like it's something new and different, and uh, hopefully the reviews are good, and it'll be a fun time for anyone who's interested in it. Yeah? Uh, I thought it was cool. I don't know if it's a game that I've played, but I saw on Twitter afterwards that it's uh, what is it, online, cloud-based, cloud yeah. So that's I pretty see, disappointing. I, I can mean, see cloud working. The way it looked, it's not surprising, but... Yeah, I'm kind of neutral on it. I want to say Square Enix has a hand in the Hitman stuff, maybe, too. So oh, yeah. It's not surprising that they're doing Cloud with that. Yeah, I think. Uh, but that might mean we might be getting Final Fan the newer Final Fantasy Cloud-based or something like that in the future. So that that's cool to see Square Enix doing more Cloud stuff on Switch. But I don't think Hitman runs too well. No, probably not. Well, it... Yeah. Based, based on what I heard on IG. Huh, even with a good internet connection, I'm kind of curious. I heard Control went really well, but that's not necessarily in their house, their wheelhouse. But mm -hmm. um, I am an MCU fan. I know this game is not necessarily like an MCU spinoff or whatever. It's uh, of a property uh, that I like. I'm I'm be willing to try it. It looks interesting. 
Um, maybe not all over the moon about it, but it looks really good. So yeah, those are my thoughts about it. Well, I mean, it definitely looks cool. Um, if it's just cloud, though, I won't be playing it. If it physically comes to like a Switch or a Switch Pro, then yeah, I'd consider getting it. Oh, with Guardians uh, of the Galaxy, I, you know, I love like the MCU and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I, this game could be fun. It kind of reminded me though of that Avengers game that came out not too long ago, and I heard that really wasn't good. And it kind of looked like the great value versions of all the characters. So, you know, I, I, we'll we'll see. <laughs> um, I, I'll wait and see how it turns out. Yeah, I thought it uh, looked pretty good. Um, definitely looks like they brought in some of the Guardians comedy into it. So, um, as long as the writing is pretty good and graphics hold up, uh, looks like fun. Yeah, Guardians is pretty weird in the comics. I wonder if they're going to go more for that kind of feel with it. Like, it feels like they're going more towards that than like MCU kind of vibe. But it'd be interesting to get more of that stuff because there's a lot of stuff that they haven't touched on. So, but like Jacob said, if it's cloud based, you know, I'm not particularly interested, even though it'd be, it'd be interesting, like, you know, like to check out if they do like a demo or something. But besides that, yeah. So I'm kind of with Josh there. I remember how well the Avengers went with Square Enix, so I'm not <laughs> really trusting Square Enix with this game. I mean, they have a deal and recently with Alan Wonder World as well. So. <laughs> that was a doozy. Yeah, I, I would say this is, has me more excited than the Avengers game did. Uh, I was actually reading a review about this game last night, or not a review, but like an early look kind of write up about it from one of the other presentations. And they're saying it looks like they may be correcting the big issues from Avengers and kind of going a different way with it. If that's the case, I think I'm really on board for it. Uh, more so than any of the other sort of Marvel games that have come out on the Switch, like Avengers or Ultimate Alliance or whatever. All right. Um, so as far as Guardians of the Galaxy goes, um, I watched the Square Enix presentation uh, so I got a little bit more out of it, um, knowing what's coming. I didn't expect it to come to Switch, um, but awesome that it is. Um, I'm going to absolutely love it. Um, just like there's a mode like that you switch into where you start playing like classic rock, like is is mixtapes basically, and kind of goes into like flying around and shooting and stuff like that. And uh, just the dynamics of, of him working with the rest of the team um, and just their antics and everything. It's going to be a trip. It's going to be a lot of fun. Chris. Yeah, I'm glad that we're all kind of like on like a similar page with a lot of these games. But um, so the next announcement, uh, it's kind of like a small game, so I think I'll just skip over it. It's called like Metroid Dread or something. So we'll just move on to it now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I can't believe I just said that. So Metroid Dread was just announced for the Nintendo Switch. I cannot believe that. That is I, I i was not expecting that i had a feeling it would be like a 2d game a 2d metroid game but i was kind of skeptical and um but it's it's metroid dread this is the game that we've been wanting to hear about for ages and it's finally here um i feel like the team probably is like uh, are like the team's like a big metroid fan and or the team is probably made up of a lot of big metroid fans and they probably like were really looking forward to metroid dread and like had their um, ear to the ground and knowing about the rumor and stuff so it was probably their way of being like hey let's bring back this uh this canceled game and um give metroid fans what they've been wanting um i think that it's probably by the um people who made Samus Returns, which is fine. I thought they did a great job with that. And it looks great. I like the kind of creepy vibe, and I like that this is a new Metroid. This is completely new. This is not a port of anything. A lot of people were expecting like a Samus Returns port, but this is completely brand new. Um, I like the style that they're going with, like this contrast of like blue and white, and um, I like that it's 2D. It's, it's perfect. It's exactly what I want. I'm super thrilled and over the moon about it. Uh, Kyle. Yeah, I'm super stoked for a new Metroid. Kind of ru uh, rusty on all the other ones, so it won't happen, but it'd be nice if they could put a collection of Zero Mission Fusion, Samus, 
Returns and Super Metroid in one, so we could kind of like catch up on the story since this is the fifth one in the series. But yeah, I, I think the whole uh, theme of it is cool, how it's like more like tech based this time instead of some uh, planet with a bunch of, you know, bugs and <laughs> just overground forest or dirt or what have you. Yeah, I think my only complaint, it looked a little, the graphics looked a little bland. They were clean, but could use like some textures and stuff. But outside of that, if, uh, if the uh, Super Metroid composers doing it, I'm, I'm all in on it. I have not played a whole lot of Metroid games. Okay, um, get out. I'm sorry. I'll go. <laughs> but it looks really good, and I would definitely be willing to uh, play it, but if not, pick it up. Oh, I'm getting a serious look right now. Uh, but the Metroid good. Initiative is back. Is. I gotta play it. It looks good. Uh, it looks really good. We'll leave it at that. Do you know what our must-get game rule is? <laughs> no. Well, if you're here, it's, it's deemed on you to get this game. You okay. must get it this year. I'll pick it up. You I must get it. You must play it. You must complete it, I think is what we said. Yeah, okay. Not get 100% or anything like that, but just get, get through the whole we'll game. We'll do this. I got yeah. this. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, I this is the highlight of the of the whole presentation for me. Um, I said beforehand, if I just even see Metroid, that will be enough to whet my appetite. Mm -hmm. And um, my goodness, we we got and they delivered. And they mentioned Metroid Prime Four; it still does exist. We don't have an update on it, but they said the name, and I think it's great. You know, they haven't said the name in quite a while since it got uh, rebooted, and. Um, but I, guys, this is fantastic. Metroid Fusion. I've wanted the what happens after Fusion since what 2002 when the when it came out. Fusion's my personal favorite 2D Metro game. I've loved Samus Returns. This game looks freaking awesome. I get SAS vibes from this machine that's chasing you. Um, I am the, Samus. Yes, Samus. Yeah. Jimmy. <laughs> um, it's a. Uh, it's it's nuts, guys. I think this is really cool. This is the highlight for me, um, and it comes out my birthday month, right before my birthday. So this is gonna be a birthday game for me. I want to get that collection, even though apparently it's sold out already on Best Buy. I want to get the Amiibo. We'll find it. It'll happen. Uh, but super stoked. I can't. I can't. I can talk hours about this. Um, so I'm gonna pass it off to Josh. But uh, so hyped. Yeah, I think this this might have been my personal favorite announcement of this E3. It was really close. But well, of this Nintendo part of it anyway. Um, yeah, I really love Samus Returns, and I was really glad to see it sort of look like it feels like that to, to move around and stuff. Um, but of course, better in HD and a new part of the story um, that they sort of hinted at in uh, Samus Returns anyway. So I, was, I was super happy to see it. And a few new moves. The suit I thought was really cool. It was almost like a Frankenstein kind of suit, but it kind of worked. <laughs> like it looked like, I think someone said the light suit and like the fusion suit, maybe something else even sort of mixed together, but I really liked it. Theming looks cool. Um, yeah, I've, I've played and beat all the 2G, 2D Metroids before it. Um, Samus Returns is probably my favorite out of that group. Um, I wish I liked fusion a little bit more like Me everyone too. else does, but... I get a little bored with it when I go back to it usually, but still, I'm, I'm very happy to see that continue. It's too hard for me. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, Samus Returns is the only uh, 2D Metroid that I've really played extensively. So um, this looks a lot like that. And uh, just all the movement and everything looks really smooth. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful looking game. Uh, love all the details that they have in the background. Looking forward to it. This is uh, day one for me. So. Yeah, this is also coming out my birthday month. But uh, I, I actually got into Fusion. Fusion was probably the Metro game I got into the most, and I tried to nice. play Returns, but the I had an issue with the like controls on that game. Like I could not do the counter where it was. It was just like too. I just I could not get into the control scheme of the, the Samus Returns. And it just kept me out of it so much. And everything they went over with this, like, alleviated most of those issues. Because the Switch, now you can customize controls on it. So I don't have to worry about that. I can switch the counter button to whatever button I want. And the counter, you can also counter, like, 
do the counter strike and stuff and, and you can fly to movement more like fluid and things. But that's like everything I wanted like as a fix for Samus Returns if it got ported to the Switch. So this has everything I wanted. So I'm yeah, I'm excited for this. To see what exactly I wanted from the 3D Metroid. Yeah, I like everyone else, I'm pretty excited as well. Uh Saw some interesting things in the trailer and in the treehouse. We saw a uh, living Chozo in the trailer, and yes. uh, in the treehouse we saw Samus had to use the Omega Cannon in order to defeat the the Emmy, which the Omega Cannon is from Metroid Prime Hunters. Don't know if that's intentional or if it's going to just be a thing, just a name that they use. But it's going to be an interesting game by the sounds of it. it looks like there's going to be a lot of lore that they're going to release so interested to see where that's going i have to be honest i only have two metroid encounter experiences in my entire life that's five minutes in the original metroid on nintendo switch online <laughs> and the fact that i could not beat the parasite queen in metroid prime on the gamecube so i but this game looks amazing and it will probably be my first truly my first metroid game and i'm going to dive right into it all right, next game. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time for you, right? <laughs> uh, it was all right. No, uh, so it was amazing. <laughs> Let me just say, like, amazing. My mind is blown. Like, we got the Amiibo, and, like, Metroid Dread is actually a real thing. Like, they kept the name all these years. Like, they just scrapped it, but they came back to it later. Like, that gives so much hope to any other game that they ever talked about and rumored about in the past. Like, Pikmin 4 coming, finally. Like, it'll come back someday. Guys, yeah, just wait. Um, but yes, just ah, the game is so beautiful, and I, I've been wanting a Metroid like on the Switch, like a newer Metroid 2D, and we're finally getting that. So I'm glad it's not a port of Samus Returns, um, and it's actually a new like a, a continuation of the story. Even that's stellar. Um, watching the Treehouse, they showed Adam talking and like how Adam isn't going to be like forcing you to do things, and is more just like hero support. And I'm really, really excited to see that dynamic, uh, you know, evolve and grow. Um, and even then, they showed um, the Aurora units, at least the, one of the Aurora units with the brain. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be exactly the same, but it's kind of suggesting that there might be a tie-in with Metroid Prime now. Like, it might be a uh, canon, uh, especially, you know, the Omega canon was mentioned. So that's also something that, that ties into that. So they might actually tie the series together, um, which suggests we might actually get to see, um, you know, Silex or something from Dread. It's, it's hard to say um, if we'll have any bleed over from that, because it was still kind of different. Um, we did get the uh, the ideas of Evil Chozo and Samus Returns, so uh, like a, a warlike version, a faction of of the Chozo. So it's going to be really cool to see how that story progresses, and just that hint that they showed of a Chozo, whether it's a true Chozo or some kind of like you know clone or, or construct. It's it's mostly Chozo, like maybe like a half Chozo or something. It's really cool to see this series evolve and the story finally moving forward it's been in stasis for what 18 years or so or however long it's been like just i'm ready for new stuff and yes awesome more metroid you know it, it definitely ties us over to metroid prime 4 and whatever else they have in the future um i'm just really excited to see metroid love you know we're not getting like a special edition system but we're getting a collector's edition we're getting the amiibo and that's all right in my book chris Ryan, your love of Metroid is infectious. I, I love you for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, two quick things that I wanted to note. It's really interesting that A, Nintendo hasn't forgotten about Metroid. Um, I was hearing that Metroid Samus Returns had poor sales and that could have affected like this type of release, but it seems like they're, they're pushing through, which is awesome. And they really believe in what the developer was capable of um, or showed off like for Samus Return, so that's pretty comforting. And also, Amiibo are not dead, so they're still releasing Amiibo. I just looked up the ones that were just announced. They look excellent. They have really good quality, um, or great detail. They are sold out at Best Buy, so I'll, while you guys are talking, I'm like scrambling to find a different place that might have them. Um, yeah. So that's really awesome. That's probably my favorite announcement from the whole E3. So it's interesting that they uh, snuck it in like four games into the presentation. Um, so the next game is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Um, I don't have too much to say, but I, I did say this in the chat. 
Um, I'm not a Dragon Ball Z fan, but if I were a Dragon Ball Z fan, it looked like I would be over the moon because it looks like they really understand what Dragon Ball Z is. And I could be wrong because, like I said, I'm not a fan, but it, I mean, it looks great. It looks like it has everything that a fan would want. And I'm just really happy for um, anyone that is interested in this title. Um, and I hope that it's done well. Um, I don't really know how well those types of games have reviewed or been received over the past few years, but um, if they nail this, it's a huge win for Dragon Ball Z fans, so I'm really happy for them. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's coming to uh, Kakarot's coming to Switch. I played it on PlayStation 4 and have watched both Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z's entire series and read the entire manga, and it's pretty... From what I can tell, it's pretty much one to one with the uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z era of the cartoon. So if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, I don't know why anybody wouldn't play it because it's open world and they recreated uh, all the scenes from the cartoons outside of some of the fighting because that's what the game, what you're doing is the fighting. So yeah, I think that's a great, a great buy on Switch and probably. At least a forty-hour game, so worth whatever price tag they put on it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. Um, might be within my top five favorite announcements from the direct. I'm like a certain other member in our circle here. I'm not a big fan of anime, but I always love Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Who didn't want to try to do a Kamehameha right. as destructive as that would be? Uh, but this looks really good. Um, almost feels like it has a open world vibe of sorts. I like how you can just take off and go anywhere. Uh, but I'm pretty excited. I think I may pick it up and definitely rent it or something. But yeah, pretty excited. Yeah, I am stoked. Uh, I love Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Um, I've been a fan since I was a kid, you know, and uh, this is honestly the, this is the type of game that I always wanted. Of them where it's open world i always said that instead of just being like a fighter style game um that you have with a lot of your past dragon ball z games um and goku he's literally my favorite hero of, of all time and uh this game is right up my alley i mean it took him a while to get to switch but it's here so i'm stoked and i will be getting it when it comes out i'm gonna take a pass on this one Jesse. <laughs> oh. Oh, gosh. Gosh. He doesn't have a sword. Hey, I got a book for you over here. Yeah. Uh, it looks good. Um, I like the art style. I like how the yeah. world is kind of um, looks a little bit more realistic when you actually get the normal kind of anime look of the characters. So, um, probably won't be getting it, but it looks like fun. So. I was uh, actually disappointed when they originally announced this game that they didn't have a switch. Uh, they said they were going to come to the Switch, which I knew it would probably come eventually because most games now have come. But yeah, since Budokai, like yeah. the idea of a like, you know, Budokai introduced like a world map and stuff that, you know, didn't quite have that open world feel yet, you know, because limitations of technology. And this really feels like what a Dragon Ball Z game should be. The problem, like, with some more of the recent Dragon Ball Z games, they're very grindy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like you know, the one, the two that have come out, like where you can make your own hero and stuff. Like those ends up just being grind fest to get what you wanted and stuff. But I'd just rather have something that's story based, you know, that I can go through. I have to grind constantly and stuff. And this looks like what we should have had for beating this game for a long time. So I'm interested in it very much. Uh, so I'm not really a Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z fan myself. But ever since I heard about this game, I figured, you know, this is a this is a Jacob Rush. Oh. So when it didn't come out for PlayStation 4, you know, I thought, you know, I feel bad for Jacob that he doesn't have a PlayStation <laughs> to play this game. But hey, now he gets to play it, so time for him. Thanks. So what you're saying is that this is going to be your Christmas game for me. It can be, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> I... I have a weird relationship with Dragon Ball Z. I have a lot of nostalgia as a kid, even though thinking back, I probably only watched like the first half of the Boo Saga. Huh. 
going back, that's all I remember. It's a good saga to watch. It's the first half of the Boo Saga. So, but uh, I'll probably get to get my God Fighters and enjoy the first, you know, I've played through and beat the first part of the story. Like, it only got like 10% through the game. But, so I'm interested. Probably pick it up. But. Cool. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm still not sure I'm going to get it. I need to see some more like gameplay and what it's like. Um, but I, it sounds like something that I'd really enjoy. It's just, I've played and watched and been through Dragon Ball Z, like, so much. And so, like, I, I'd want to see, like, some new stuff in there. And if they've got new story and, and new points and things to flesh out, like, things that we already know from just the show, I'll be pretty cool with that. Um, but I, uh, I like that they're including the, the extra stuff, um, not just the regular version. We're getting the, the better version. Um, and, uh, I'm kind of curious to see what they do with Dragon Ball Z going forward with games, like, will we see a remaster of the Budokai games, um, you know, like a collection or something brought over to the Switch or something like that? That would be amazing. Um, but just the story, I'm glad they're covering that. And, uh, you know, it's not, not Legacy of Goku. It's got actually gr great graphics and uh, it hasn't, isn't on a handheld. Like, it, it's older than, uh, you know, dirt. But, yeah, I'm really excited to see Kakarot uh, take off and uh, be just an awesome Dragon Ball Z experience. Um, and I think I'm about ready to dive into the Dragon Ball Z story again. So I think it'll be coming at a good time to really experience that. Cool. So um, this game, I don't know when this appeared in the uh, in the direct. I'm going off of, what is it, Destructoids list? And they haven't listed this. And I think it's important for us to bring it up because um, Joss, you know, texted it to us. Um, so Mario plus Rabbids is getting a sequel which is awesome. Uh, that was announced at the Ubisoft conference, but um, I think it's important for us to talk about it um, because it was shown in the uh, the E3 trailer and it will be coming to Switch, which is awesome. Um, so I haven't played the original. I thought it was a very cool idea. I mean, we've talked about this a few times, but when it was first leaked, it looked very odd and controversial. And when it came out, everyone just loved it. And uh, I'm happy that Josh is getting the sequel that he's been wanting, and uh, other people who are fans of the of this game. So um, it's it's just great that like the hard work that they put into the original is is paying off, and um, they'll, it seems like they'll be taking some chances and uh, getting a little weird with it. So I'm looking forward to seeing where they go with this. Yeah, I think uh, the new Mario Rabbids game looks uh, build on what they did in the first one. It looks like a a lot better game to me. Kind of wish Nintendo could have saved it. Maybe it was up to Ubisoft for today's direct because I think it would have made it that much better. But I get that Ubisoft really, really needed it for their direct because it was terrible. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to the game. Did it get leaked? It got leaked mm -hmm. just before. Like an hour before. Yeah. By the Nintendo page. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this myself. Um, I was very apprehensive about trying the first one until Josh convinced me to try it out. And after I did, I'm like, this is really good. Uh, the opening uh, cinematic trailer for the sequel here looked really good. Like I was watching a movie, which I think I, I would like to see a movie with Rabbids and Mario. Who knows? Maybe we'll see something like that with the Mario movie in the future. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to pick this up and look forward to giving it a shot. Uh, I everyone always talks about Josh being this awesome Mario Rabbids fan, and which is true. I mean, flow to Germany here, but I got I was obsessed with this game. I, I bought this game day one, pre ordered, got the statues. I love it. I love it. Uh, and the DK DLC that came with it. Josh and I were talking on the way here that that'd be sweet if they brought more DLC to this one and like expand, expand, expanded it with like more Kongs because I think DK added a whole new element to the game. Um, but I'm really excited about this game to see where they're going to go. Um, they, you can see that they're dipping into a lot of Mario Galaxy in this one. And uh, I thought Rosalina was hilarious <laughs> when I saw the rabbit Rosalina. Uh, that was really funny. We see Absence of Yoshi. Um, we saw Bowser in like the artwork. So I wonder if you can play as Bowser. And what if we had like a rabid Bowser this time? That would be really funny and cool. So. Um, I'm really excited. It's, I can't believe it's coming out in 2022. Um, maybe this is a Switch Pro release because I thought the game looked very much improved than what the Switch Pro, the first Switch game looked like. So we'll see, but I'm, I'm stoked. 
Josh, what about you, buddy? Yeah, well, of course I'm excited. I, I do wish they would have held off for the Nintendo one. It kind of felt like it, um, it fit weird with the rest of Ubisoft's show. Um, it was like kind of the only kid game, I guess, kid-friendly one outside of Just Dance, maybe. But anyhow, yeah, I mean, I, obviously I love the first one. I'm wearing my jersey from that um, Gamescom trip, actually, right today, even though it's more fitting, I guess, for Saturday. I'm super excited for it. It looks like the battles are going to be a little bit different this time. Um, not so much of that grid-based, kind of whatever you want to call it from the first game. That's interesting. Um, I want to see how that works out. Um, I love the character they bring to it. Um, even in that first little trailer, again, like Rabid Rosalina, it was probably one of the best parts of that. Um, it's cool to hear Grant Kirkhope do like covers of Mario Galaxy tracks. Um, yeah, uh, I, I do wonder where Yoshi is. Yeah, there's a beautiful looking game. Um, hard to believe that's uh, running on the Switch. So, um, definitely really excited for this. Love the first game, love the DLC. Uh, this will be a day one purchase for me as well. You know, maybe we'll uh, be rescuing you. you know? yeah. This is one of those games where it's like, for me, like Mario Kart and things like that, I never buy. I'll just go and play it for me. <laughs> so I'll probably enjoy the game. But that's just kind of my take on it. Like it, it looks like a good game. It looks very polished and stuff. So I hope it does well, well for Nintendo and Ubisoft. So the first Mario Rabbids, I really didn't get that far into. Didn't really get into the game. So uh, glad to see there's another version of the game, but I probably won't be getting it myself. Okay, we're gonna have to talk after this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I haven't played the first one at all. I've actually been apprehensive about getting it. I say that, and I'm having flashbacks of when Marty asked his friend that I'd never played Mega Man before, uh, <laughs> which I did finally beat Mega Man 2. So with, with the first one being on sale right now, I might pick it up because it's on a super good sale right now. Uh, and if I enjoy that, I'll, I'll look into getting the second one. Definitely uh, pick up the Donkey Kong DLC if it's on the cheap. <laughs> it, I believe it is on sale. Um, but yeah, I haven't played the DLC yet. I haven't finished the main story. I think I was just going into the last area or what have you. Um, but I really enjoyed what I did play of it. I like the humor. Um, I like the charm. The battle system and, and the gameplay really, really spoke to me. And it was, it was interesting because I don't really like that style, but just you know the bouncing and the strategy. And, and I like that a lot. And so that really kind of drew me in. And I'm really looking forward to playing the sequel. Um, and I get very, very much like they took... Mario in like Mushroom Kingdom and threw Rabbids in, and now it looks like they took Mario Galaxy and and threw in Rabbids. So it's gonna mean that uh, there's no Yoshi because you know, Yoshi wasn't in the first Galaxy. So uh, it's not really, <laughs> but uh, it'd be kind of cool to see Yoshi come back and Rabbit Yoshi and um, see some of the newer characters that they do. Like, are we gonna see like Wario? Are we gonna see Waluigi pop up? You know, or like Rabbit versions of them? Um, what what are the characters that we might might uh, come across in this the the sky's the limit here <laughs> fun intended um but yeah just traveling across like in a space setting they're on a spaceship and all the futuristic look and it just it's really cool i really am glad that this is going to be a thing um and i'm kind of curious about that mystery character it seems like just a, a unique to that game um character they're introducing uh but i don't i don't necessarily think it was like necessary um, the green and like the blue hair and the green hair, like the green eyebrows and stuff like that. Like, I'm kind of curious what they're trying to pull from that. If there's any reference to any kind of Nintendo character, or if it's just like their own thing, or what what that is really. Um, but I also like the rabbit uh, Luma or whatever they're called, uh, the stars. Um, it makes sense to throw them in there and have numerous of them. Um, but I hope that that same potty humor is in there too, uh, you know, like random like toilets in space or something. All right, and um, uh, the next announcement was Mario Party Superstars, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess this is a collection of uh, favorite boards and uh, mini games from past Mario Kart or Mario Parties, and uh, it's awesome that it's not like the 3DS one, which I think was just mini games. <laughs> you just kind of like pick and choose mini games, and that's it. So it's cool that it's like a fully fledged uh, Mario Party that has favorites from the past. So. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get this because I already have the ones that are included in this collection. At the same time, though, 
it would be pretty cool to have like a modern version of those uh, boards and games. Um, it would be great if it hopefully comes with online play on day one. We'll see if it'll take them another two years to update the game with that. Um, but yeah, I think it's a great announcement and um, I think it's going to sell extremely well. And um, hopefully it also reminds Nintendo about like what made Mario Party special in the first place and kind of gives them the right idea moving forward and, and how to get the franchise back on track because it seems like they've been experimenting and it hasn't been paying off as um, much as, uh, as it should. Um, yep. Yeah, I thought the Mario Party Superstars was a pretty cool announcement. Hopefully, it's not just bare bones like the uh, previous game was, if that's the case. I mean, if it's not bare bones, I'll definitely be buying the game. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. It's Mario Party. I kind of know what to expect. Um, it looked all right. Um, I, I kind of thought, why did they not just make a bunch of DLC for Super Mario Party. I feel like Super Mario Party came out and boom, not a whole lot was done to that. Only a few boards and that's it. Um, hopefully this does turn out to be just like that one and they do more to it than what we're even seeing here. Um, that remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, it, it's Mario Party. <sighs> well, the uh, most nostalgic Mario Party game I have is for the first one. Uh, I was just trying to replay it uh, just a, about a month or so ago, a little bit with uh, my girlfriend, and she said, I, you know, I just can't get into it with the, these old graphics very much because we were playing on a flat screen. And, uh, and then lo and behold, the exact level we played was pizza's uh, cake, birthday cake, and uh, that's what they showed off. And I, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm not, like, freaking out about it. You know, it's Mario Party, but... At the same time, this is the one I have most nostalgic for, and um, I think that it's really cool. And hopefully it just runs well, and I hope that they just do DLC for this one and bring back more boards from other games and just make this a big collection of the top stuff from the past. Um, that's kind of what I felt like they're kind of going for here. Um, they're just starting off with the first one. So cool, cool to have it. It was, it was a nice touch to add to the, the direct. Yeah, I was really happy to see this. I was hoping they would just sort of go back and give us some of the, the good old Mario parties. Um, I don't feel like Indie Cube has done the greatest with the series thus far. So I'm fine with them going back and bringing back old stuff in a new way. Um, I'm really excited for it. I know we'll get some play out of it. Um, I've always played Mario Party. Um, I, I'm still a little disappointed if there's only five boards. That's pretty bad. I think there was like seven or eight in the first game 20-some years ago. So we'll see. Other than that, though, it looks good. Yeah, I thought, uh, like graphically, it looked really good. Um, I kind of felt like this sh should have been like just DLC um, for Super Mario Party. So um, kind of disappointing. It's another $60 price tag. But it looks kind of like Nintendo listened to complaints and stuff from Super Mario Party and corrected a lot of those things in this game. Uh, may or may not get. Once again, this is one of those games I like to play at friend's house, but not necessarily have to sell <laughs> Because I'm always down to play Mario Party, but it, yeah, actually, what they were showing off in the treehouse, it looks really good. Like, if the Switch can handle that, like, you know, that small amount of very detailed graphics, which you actually saw in Super Mario Party with, like, they can handle that kind of graphics and stuff. So it looks really detailed, really nice. Um, I, it's one of those things where, yeah, there's probably some issue with the base code of the first one and stuff. And so instead of trying to build upon that product, they just were like, well, let's just start over and we'll do a DLC model with something else. Um, and like Ryan pointed out, they probably um, gave the online to the previous game because they were working on the online for this one. So I, it should probably ship with online automatically, especially with everything that's gone on and the need of online more, like this, people wanting that more and stuff, even from Nintendo. So yeah, it hopefully does well for them. Uh, I'll probably be getting this game. I'm interested to see what they're doing with the mini games and the boards, see if they're going to have, like other people said, more than five boards. 
But uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested to see where this game's going. To avoid sounding like a broken record, I'm just going to say, give me my Mario Party 5 stuff. <laughs> Cowards. <laughs> Mario Party 3 is a big one for me. I'm Mario Party 2, uh, sorry. Uh, but you know, I like that this feels like what Super Mario Party should have been, but yeah. at the same time, like Super Mario Party was very much like a part of the gimmick, the motion when you know, Switch was newer. Uh, so the fact that they're bringing just control-based Mini games is great. Um, so you can play it anywhere. You don't have to use a gimmick. Um, and you can play multiplayer. You can play boards. You know, it sounds really like a good package. Like, this is the Mario that we really want uh, for nostalgia. And I think that, like, the new Mario games are probably going to have gimmicks to them still. Um, but it's nice to go back and have these collections like Mario 100 had for the 3DS, which I didn't pick up. But I think this one is finally the one that's going to, like, make me want to pick it up. Not as just like, oh, like, oh, there's not much else. To pick up and my family probably wants to play this but this is more like something like yeah this sounds like it's right up my alley uh it sounds like it's something for me so i'm looking forward to the mario party for this oh one. yeah the saves the save states the idea that you could bring back like you could stop in the middle of a game yes oh and, that's cool and go back to uh i didn't you know, realize that yeah i think i think they even said it works for the online so like if that's yeah. true like you could have a running game with like your friends who live miles and miles away. wow that would be pretty cool um it would be interesting I know they couldn't really do it for this, but like do the the Mario uh, Mario Golf like they did for 3DS, where you have like you just play your, your round and then you're done, um, and then you come back together and all together do the mini games, like taking your turns like off turn would be something. But I think it's really built for everybody doing something together. Um, but it's kind of that that you know pause, but you can still play together with friends over time. Uh, so you know it gets late, you can stop the game, you can come back next week and meet for game night and and pick up your Mario Party right where you left off. So. Uh, that, that's good, uh, and I wouldn't see I wouldn't see any reason why you wouldn't want to play like the longest turns game, you know, because you could just pause it and come back to it later, and that's right. really what we needed for Mario Party. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, the next announcement. This was pretty unexpected and kind of like a nice little special surprise. Uh, Cruisin' Blast, which is apparently an arcade favorite that's coming to the Switch, and uh, I never heard of it. I never saw it before, but. Um, I think it's pretty cool. It looked great. And um, yeah, I'm excited for it. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I haven't played a cruising game since the Nintendo 64. Um, so if they've added some um, modern quality of life stuff to it, I would probably be really into it. But if it's basically the same as the 64 games, I don't think it'd be worth it. Um, it looked interesting but i can't say i'm going to pick it up if someone got it and we had a game night played it that'd probably be the extent of me touching it uh but other than that yeah that's all i've got to say i don't care <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it looked like it could be fun but I, again we'll, we'll see how it turns out maybe there'll be good reviews and it'll only be 20 bucks so. we'll see i don't have much else to say uh, yeah, I'm kind of indifferent on those two. I forgot about them already. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> We're cruising on through here. Oh, totally. Uh, I don't really care much about it either, but I do think that they're going to have to compete with Forza that came out for Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> so, interesting That's to see not how competition. this game's going to go. <laughs> Forza. I, I got nothing to say about this one. I don't know. I don't have much to say here. Um. Take it away, Chris. Okay, and uh, next up we have uh, WarioWare. I believe it's called Get It Together, which seems to be a completely new um, uh, entry in the WarioWare franchise. So, pretty excited for that. Um, it definitely had the same like personality that the originals had. And um, I'm just glad that the franchise is dead. So definitely going to get it on day one. Um, hopefully, I mean, it, it looks like it's like the same developers and they like know what to do. So um, I'm not too worried about like the quality of it. But um, just that was a really, really nice, unexpected surprise. So I'm really excited for that. And hopefully it has like online play. I feel like that would be like a huge, huge bonus um, playing that with friends online. Like playing with you guys, that would be awesome. So, yep. Yeah, I uh, really I've only played one WarioWare and it was on the Wii. 
I really love that one and uh, I'm going to pick this one up and hope it sells that really well and they'll be like, oh, maybe we should make a Wario Land game too. So that's why I stand on that. I have never owned a WarioWare game, but it's a game I've always played when I've been at a uh, friend's house. Um, looks fun. Looks neat. Um, I'm sure somebody I know will get it, and I will be invited over, and we'll get to play it so that I don't have to get it myself. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it looks neat, and if anything, it's about time we got one on the Switch. So I think that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, that's the extent of my thoughts. Um, I have, just like Zach, I've actually never owned one. I always played one with Ryan, uh, mainly, um, and some other friends in the past, especially during the Wii era. Um, I may get it. Uh, if anything, it just gives me hope that they still remember Wario is alive, and I just hope they also remember that he did, did adventure games. Um, go check out our latest Wario Land 4 episode, but we really need some more Wario Land games, and I think it would be awesome if they could bring that back. So it gives me hope for, I guess, the future of a different franchise. Yeah, I was pretty happy to see it. I know a lot of us seem to be a little disappointed that it wasn't like Wario Land, since it has been forever since we've seen one of those. Um, and I agree with that, but I'm pretty happy to see Wario wear back. Um, I, I feel like Wario um, went blank. The one on, game in Wario on the Wii U was okay. But it wasn't as good as the rest of it. just the regular WarioWare game. So I'm glad to see that return. Um, and I'm interested to see how those changes work out where it looks like you're controlling a character the whole time now. And there's co-op with it, so that's always a plus for me. Um, it'd be a good time. They, they usually are. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm kind of indifferent on those two. I've not played a WarioWare game, and uh, they're really, really exciting. So. I express the same sentiments. It's a party game. It's one of the fun times I used to have. We used to pass around the controller playing Warrior Wear mini games and stuff. Um, I hope a Warrior Lane game comes out of it, but that's about it. So I've played Warrior Wear games in the past. Oh, I think they're okay. I think the, the new feature they're adding where you can change your characters to solve the puzzle in different ways looks cool. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm going to get it, though. Yeah, I don't have any uh, history with this game, so I don't really have much to say. Um, definitely love the Warrior Wars games. Um, I didn't get gold. Um, I just didn't have the money at the time. And then, you know, the Switch came out. I was like, I just want to play Warrior Wear on the Switch. So definitely, yeah. like, on, on this one. Uh, and uh, I just, I'm kind of curious to see, like, you know, they got the two-player option. I wonder if that's, like, a gimmick and like you can only play certain mini games with the two players if you can't play all of them um, i'm kind of curious what they're going to do with that um but you know it, it i hope they keep it not too mario party like and i also like the idea of using different characters and uh that kind of opens the idea of using different characters like the warrior Wear characters but make it into like a warrior Wear, or warrior land game and use those characters and that i feel like they could meld the two universes together um and, like have mini games or micro games but also like have a full-on adventure um, eventually we'll get we get the best of both worlds um, which would be pretty cool uh but not warrior world please wow i thought there'd be a, a lot more excitement than what i was hearing but um i don't know i'm really really excited for WarioWare. i'm so happy it's back um the next game that was announced was shin megami tensei 5. i have nothing to say about this but uh, i know a lot of people are excited about it but i i i'm i'm good what do you guys have to say about that? We collectively agree to. I mean, I thought the, the, scale. Of the monsters were cool because <laughs> they're the same ones from uh, Persona. But a better game. I think Persona yeah. looks like the better game. I, but, I, I got excited know. about Jack Frost. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, probably because you're Jack. Jack, Jack Frost. Rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, the only thing I was excited about. But we'll see. I'm, I, you know, I would if you get really good reviews like Persona Five did. I, I'd probably pick it up because. I just those I can't talk. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I know of maybe one person that I've heard of that uh, is excited for, but other than that, I haven't heard anyone talking about it. That's just <laughs> yeah. Shin Megami Tensei is pretty niche, even more niche than Persona. I mean, at least it looks better than the remaster they just put out. That game looks, mm -hmm. but yeah, dull gray and brown. Okay. 
All right, uh, what was next? All right, so next up we have Fatal Frame Maiden of the Dark Water, which is uh, really unexpected, but a pretty cool surprise. I remember hearing about this game when the Wii U was around, and <clears throat> I heard really good things, but it was just one of those games that just never got uh, localized to the United States. So it's pretty cool that it eventually found its way over here. Um, I thought that like the original had like Wii U controls, like really implemented the gamepad. I could be wrong about that, but if that is the case, it'll be interesting to see how that translates to the Switch. But um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get it. I'm not really a big horror fan, but um, it's cool that we have more options. So yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big horror fan, so I probably won't get it, but I thought it looked cool. The graphics look pretty nice. I remember, I think it was the original on the Wii U. Yep. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I thought it looked cool, but not anything I ever really wanted to pick up. And I kind of felt the same about this one, but it does look cool. But yeah, that's about all I can say. Um, it's just another Wii U port. Add to the list that I keep hoping to get to a couple more that I really want to come over. So uh, take that one off. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, I don't like horror really at all, but my girlfriend does, and I actually think she would be excited about this game, so I'm happy for her. I'm excited to show it to her, see what she thinks. Yeah, pretty interesting concept. Uh, doesn't really seem like my sort of thing, but, you know, it's always good to have more, I guess, on the Switch. Uh, happy for those that is there, but um, I could easily see them doing the gyro controls for this game and stuff, like, you know, and some of the cool things that the Switch have. But, yeah, you know, like people said, I'm not interested in horror besides Resident Evil 4, so. Yeah, I, I don't really care much for it myself either. Yeah, I'm not a big horror guy either. Uh, although I wish my students who like horror would get into something more like this and some of the other crap that they yeah. talk about. <laughs> so. Like, I don't know, not to talk too much crap, but like this to me seems much more interesting than something like Five Nights at Freddy's. It does. Out. It does yes. look at least interesting, yes. you know? And I, I, that's the one thing I will say is it looks intriguing. It's not your typical horror game. Yeah. Uh, this game did kind of uh, hook me. It put me in the mood to want to play a horror game again. So I'm, I'm thinking, like, you know, graphically, like, I wouldn't want to play this type of game on a 3DS or something. I'd want, like, a better graphics game. Um, but I think I'm kind of getting feeling the vibe. Like I've always been curious about this series, and uh, I'm, I think I want to try it out. Um, I don't know if I want to outright buy it, either get it on sale or like find like a library or something that has it for rent or something like that. Uh, but I do want to experience the game, um, and who knows? Maybe it'll sell me on the series, and I'll buy the game because I like it so much. Um, but I am I am intrigued. Um, it's like horror Pokemon Snap. <laughs> there you go. All right, and uh, the next announcement, this is a pretty big one as well. Totally unexpected, but very welcome. Uh, Advance Wars, the original and its sequel, are getting rebooted and kind of like remastered for the Switch. So it's not just one, it's two as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, I was very surprised by this. I think the originals are classics and probably like the best Game Boy Advance games. Um, it kind of takes away from like my hipster pride of uh, going around town with the originals on my Game Boy Advance like to this day. So, uh, so I'm not going to be as cool doing that. But um, the originals are just so amazing and probably like the best strategy games for like uh, for newcomers. So um, it's interesting what they did with the art style. I'm not sure how I feel about it because I think that the sprites were really um, charming in their own way. But um, it's it's pretty cool that they're just bringing back Advance Wars. I, I really thought that we would never get another Advance Wars. And even though it's a port, um, if this sells well enough, it can lead to uh, to more uh, uh, more sequels coming our way. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, this will be a, a day one purchase for me. I've never played Advance Wars, but it's something I'd like to try out. And I like how, uh, even though it's not pixel art, which I love, how the new graphics kind of look similar to uh, Link's Awakening mm -hmm. the toy graphics. So I'm really into that. And I like how they animated the uh, characters, too. They look really fluid. So yeah, it'll be a day one purchase for me. I don't know about it being a day one purchase for me, but I do remember Advance Wars back in the day and never really got into it, maybe paid much attention to it. But I think it is really cool to see 
a classic game come back in this way makes me think and wonder what other things can we see revived. Um, I may pick this one up just to be able to branch out and try something new, not just the same old, same old. I, um, you know, I have never played it. I thought of Tom immediately, and we looked at our phones, and he said he was crying. Um, so, because he can't be here with us today, he had some bigger things to do, um, some important things. But, uh, he, you know, it's something that, kind of like what Kyle said, I'd be willing to try. I don't know, I'm a lot more uh, open to trying some new things out. That's the beauty of the Switch, is that I've been giving games that I never would in the past more chances. and. Uh, this is really cool. This has been a game that has been missing for years, um, like decades. And it's really cool to see it come back and refreshed. It's very similar to like Metroid, actually. You know? I feel like we need, everybody needs to buy both these so they actually finally make more. Make them. Yeah. yeah, buy them, make more support of the cause. And it was cool, you know, you pointed out, Kyle, that Brian Altano, Ryan tweeted out just like, how many uh, GameCube, Game Boy Advance games are in here? And that era was a special time. It was really, really a lot of good games. And you see them coming back with Monkey Ball and um, uh, Metroid and, and Advance Wars now. So, um, yeah, I think I'll give it a shot. I don't feel anything about it, but it's cool that it's here. Yeah, I didn't play it back, you know, back in the Game Boy Advance days. I, I just wasn't into those sort of games. Um, I'm a little more open to more now, so yeah, we'll look into it. And I, I thought it looked pretty good. It's two games in one, so I, it is a sixty dollars game. So you know, I, I'm not real sure. Think how of it, it as thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. If it was one, I don't and know how I would feel about it. But with it being both, that's okay. It's <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it turns out. It looks pretty good so far. Um, I heard they're pretty good games. So might be worth a look later. Yeah, I definitely uh, thought it looked really good. Uh, looks interesting. Um, I think a lot of people um, kind of compare this to or Rabbids or Fire Emblem. Yeah, I think yeah, Fire. Fire Is it the same team? Too? Fire Emblem? I don't Is know. Fire Emblem? I don't know. Yeah, that sounds right. All right. Uh, looks really good. Um, really like the look of it. Uh, I think the only thing I was disappointed about was it's not coming until December. That's a great Christmas time game, though. You go on Christmas break, you sit at home, play with your friends. That'd be a good time to really give it a chance. Yeah, that's what I, what I always liked about like Christmas games, I because I could ask for more than one. Yeah. So I'd take a chance on a game I'd never played before mm -hmm. that reviewed well on IGN and GameSpot back in the day. And mm -hmm. you know, most of the time, I was surprised in a good way. For sure. Yeah, like I love all the Game Boy Advance. Love that we're getting here, like uh, sequel to Fusion and every of these Advance War remakes and stuff. It, my hope is that we can get a Sigma Star remake, which no one remembers that game besides me, so it's on my <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for people who are interested in this. It looks really good. Uh, never played Advance Wars myself, always been kind of interested in it. Uh, I pick it up, may not. I'm kind of unsure on the line. Yeah, don't got much of my advanced days for just Pokemon and then like crappy movie games that <laughs> were garbage. So, so like I don't have a lot of nostalgia for that, <laughs> that era. So I'm I'm happy though. Like I told, I think that's my takeaway for most of the directors. Like I'm happy that we, that people are getting stuff. Not a lot of it was for me, but I'm happy. Yeah. Okay, Tom. This is right at you. Only way that I'm going to get. And play this game and give it a chance. And keep in mind, this is two games. Here's my condition: if you haven't played World Ends with you, get it for Switch, play it through. And and if uh, if you enjoyed that experience, um, I'm not gonna say you have to get it this year, but I say get Neo World Ends with you as well. Um, and uh, if you if you do those two things, even if you like rent the World Ends with you and play it, and then get the new one or something like that, like I will pick up Advance Wars and try it and get into it. But that's that's up to you, Tom. Let me know. Balls in your court, Tom. Just wanted to give like a little PSA um, to anyone who's listening and has like a mild interest in these games. This direct is our opportunity to let these series 
continue. So if these games interest you, buy it, pre-order it, and support it, and let it be known that these are the games that you want to still have around uh, long into the future. Because if it's something that you're just like, eh, I'll think about it and stuff, like I understand that, but it really runs the risk of having that series kind of die out. So if if you think that you're interested in Advance Wars, don't wait for a sale. Get it on day one, because that's how that's how these franchises stay alive. So just wanted to say that. Um, uh, the next announcement is Danganronpa. Um, I have no interest in this game. Um, it looks interesting for what it is, but what it is does not interest me. So that's all I got to say about that. What? <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I played a title by the same company, just the demo, uh, The World Ends Club. And I, I enjoyed what I played of that, like the storytelling, but um, I'm not sure that's the kind of game I want to put several hours into. So for now, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'll pass on it. I have nothing to say at all about this. Uh, I was quite annoyed that they were wasting my E3 time with, <laughs> with this game. So that's all I want to say. I think all I remember is a black and white teddy bear. <laughs> it looked very angry. But Same. I think this um, this trailer was like two or three minutes too long. <laughs> yeah, they said in that aura. So I think I'm the only one in this entire group that even noticed the first thing about this series. <laughs> uh, so this is one of them I'm definitely going to be getting on my Switch. Oh my! I played the the originals on the PlayStation Vita. Which is probably why no one knows about it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty popular in certain circles on the internet. But uh, uh, So it was probably very big news to certain people. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting it. It's like, uh, I like to say it's like uh, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney meets the American Big Brother reality show. Because it's sort of the... Similar concept of you've got to find out who's the murderer, and then you have to agree as a group to vote this person out. And if you're wrong, everyone dies. So it's an interesting concept. They didn't really do it justice in the trailer because they just kind of assumed everyone knew what the series was about. Well, when you put it that way, it makes it sound a little bit more interesting. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of uh, adult humor in it, innuendos, uh, curse words, things that would make Jacob. Uh, not happy to play the game. Really? <laughs> I, I, you you got to make us my musket game. I'll give it a test. <laughs> hey, you just probably not be happy. I'm going a little all, dark here. All I got to say is if they really wanted me to get this game, they should have they should have had a different Pokemon other than more Pico crossover with it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> um, I have heard a lot of good things about uh, Danganronpa. Um, I, again, the Rampa suggested that it was something law-based, so I, I, I think Phoenix Wright, and so I kind of got that that idea. Um, but it seems very like text-based adventure type, um, like mystery. Like I, I like the charm. I like the art style. The, the teddy bear is pretty iconic. I've seen it several times in several different magazine game magazines and stuff like that. And I've always been curious about it, but it's just never had anything that really gripped me and something that I want to play. So I'll probably pass on it. Um, but I've always been curious about the series, and it has been highly recommended to me before. So might might be persuaded if the right people were to like explain it to me better and maybe get me interested in something something that hooks me. I feel like with the the stylistic art choice, like they have this whole uh, they have a, this whole part when you are about to finish up a case where it just goes into like a comic book. You have to like complete the pages of the comic book. I think that whole art style thing would probably appeal to Kyle if he likes games like that. Yeah, the way that he just described it actually made it seem pretty intriguing. Um, uh, like I said, I didn't really know anything about it, but I have heard really good things about it. And um, yeah, if, if I have like a better understanding of what type of game this is, I might pick it up. But hopefully they can replace the blood with sweat for Jacob. <laughs> and uh, all right, so the next game is called Strange Brigade. I have nothing to say about this because I don't even remember seeing it i don't know what it is but apparently strange brigade is coming so does anyone have anything they want to say about strange brigade 
no one here really remembered it but Traven. So I think we're. <laughs> I think I was on the. It came out today. <laughs> <laughs> I think he yeah, transitioned. Uh, it was a little awkward. It was like immediately yeah. the next thing. Or like there was like Tony Hawk and then this. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, Tony yeah, Hawk. Like, no, this is one. No, there was Tony Hawk and there was this one. Train for yeah. I think was different. There was like four different characters. It was like I think the, the joke at the time was oh, like yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, but, like, Kyle yeah. said that. Guardians, yeah. Guardians of the Two. Yeah, Guardians of the Two. Yeah. So it's like you know, it, it kind of just kind of fit in there weird, and the pacing was a little strange. But it kind of just led yeah. in there, and you're like, what, what is this? <laughs> this and we we didn't even mention Monkey Ball like okay. that that like we had a bunch of like little spotty games that got announced quickly and that's cool we get Monkey Ball right oh, I'll be buying Monkey Ball oh yeah sure. yeah sure. um I, I love the first one on GameCube I definitely picked that one I think I did pick up the second one as well because I like the mini games more than I like the core games but. I guess I'll just pick this one up because everyone has I've never owned a Monkey Ball but I'll pick it up I like monkeys so, <laughs> on my shirt <laughs> uh, but I think that's all we have to say about this back end. <laughs> I'm curious to see if Ryan's going to get Monkey Ball because <laughs> I know he's not the biggest Monkey fan for whatever reason. <laughs> but, um, guys, question for you What is it? Is it like a collection of games? Is it like one, two, and some other ones? Or is it like, yeah, what is it? Um, it's a collection of one, two, and I think three or one of the other ones. It looked like, like a, a DS game. Uh, or it something. might have been the DS one. I know. I, they're probably, you know, because this is coming out, they probably are, it's going to be like a cell phone adaption, adaptation. Um, and it's prob they probably took out the Chiquita Banana uh, uh, licensing because it wasn't actually licensed. They put it in there. And, uh, probably oh, then screw it. They probably got uh, heavily fined for doing that, but they didn't have permission to use Chiquita Banana in the first one. Uh, but they did anyway. But, you know, it still should be pretty fun. I think that's the reason that I played Monkey Ball was because it had name branding in it that I recognized. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, but I, I stayed for you know the mini games. It was a lot of fun, like just playing like like pool and stuff with monkeys that are trapped in a hamster ball. Uh, it's, just, it's it's very charming and it, it's very um, in my childhood um, at my grandparents they had this like thing called sidewinder. It was a wooden like steel ball. Like you, you tilt the table back and forth and it was like a like a snake like serpentine and you try to like get the ball down the uh, the track or it'd fall into the the ball. You have to start back up at the top again and try to like tilt it to get the ball to the end of the track. It's kind of like a maze type thing with, with weights and things like that. So uh, that's kind of the idea that I got from it. And so it took me back to my childhood. So I did go ahead and spring for that monkey ball. Um, but this just, it's just a port of that stuff. And um, I think I'm thinking about getting it just because it's just charming and uh, it's fun, fun to play, especially multiplayer with friends. I played it on my GameCube uh, screen uh, on, on a trip and uh, it, was, it was fun. Yeah, I think I'm going to get it. Like, I already have, I think I have, like, pretty much every monkey ball that's uh, that's been for a, on a Nintendo system, including the DS one, which is, like, surprisingly really good. So um, I think I'll still get it. Um, yeah, absolutely love monkey ball. There's actually a few games that um, are not on my list that I'll mention a little bit later. But uh, the next one that was announced was... Oh, um... I guess additional DLC to uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Um, I haven't played this game. It's, again, just not something that's really for me. But I know a lot of you guys uh, in that room are probably pretty excited for this. I haven't played Age of Calamity, so. You need to borrow mine. All right, we'll make a swap and you can finish Paper Mario. OK. I am greatly disappointed that anyone in this room, or not, has not played Age of Calamity, because it is a fantastic game. And the more we can get of it, DLC and whatnot, I am all for it. I am pretty excited. I thought the look we had of everything looked really great. And I cannot wait. And that's about all I can say. Uh, I loved the first game. Um, I don't really know if I want the DLC. Uh, I feel like I played as much as I wanted to out of the first game. I guess it just depends on how if this is going to further the story. That's really all I got it for is I wanted to see the story and the connections. Um, so if it adds to the story a lot, then I think I would pick it up. Um, but I'm pretty much done with it. I've had my fill of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely loved it um, when it came out. And I was happy to dive back into some of that Breath of the Wild more. It's sort of its own thing apart from the rest of the show, I feel like. Um, 
I like some of what they did with the story. I wouldn't want them to do it like in, I don't, I don't want to give away spoilers. I don't want them to do some of what they did in that, like in a regular Zelda game. It kind of worked there. Um, nothing else for a reason to have more characters to play as. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, the DLC, it was really cool that you could play as a, like a big guardian. Um, the, uh, I can't think of the bite's name. Uh, the Master Cycle, that was cool. Um, I think for me, it's I, I pretty much like did everything in that game already. So wanting to drop 20 bucks on it again is a little hard. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably end up with it at some point. Yeah, I have not played it or um, whatever, but I've played other um, Master Warriors games, so I really enjoy those. And this DLC kind of makes me want to get it. So, looking forward to that. Uh, the original Hyrule Wars was actually the first game I got on the Switch. Um, I very much enjoy uh, that this concept, and I was glad when it came to the Switch, it had all the DLC on it. I almost got it for the 3DS, but uh, I ended up waiting and got it for the Switch, so I hope it would do something. I did play the demo for Arrow Warriors Age of Calamity. Um, I really liked it. Like, I hope they do something with a combination with the DLC or something, but, you know, I might end up just having to, you know, get it all together at one point, but yeah, I'm, I really look forward to this. Uh, so I'm a big Dynasty Warriors fan myself. Uh, I've played the Hyrule Warriors and Age of Calamity. Definitely looking forward to the DLC. The uh, playing as a Guardian looks cool, although I'm going to guess that's probably a special game mode. It's probably not actual character. It requires the Amiibo. Oh, it requires the I don't know. I'm oh, I'm throwing that out there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely excited for the DLC. This is the first one that the Wave 2 is actually supposed to be even better than Wave 1, so we'll see where they're going with this. I bought Age of Calamity Day and Day, and then I recently just opened the case and put it in the game case to bring it here. So, like, I, I bought it, but I haven't played it. Oh, my. Uh, Hurry up. So, so I'm going to have to get on that. That's good. I, uh, yeah, I already uh, pre-ordered it and the money came out of my account, so I'm locked in. Uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever the ride is, uh, I, I'm locked in there. Um, I liked that they showed the Master Cycle Zero and Zelda uh, dragging it. Um, I thought that was really cool to see, like, like, Link kind of inherited it or got it after and, and is using it in, in Breath of the Wild. I like how that, that kind of changes the story a little bit um, and say that that's an element uh, in the past. Uh, that was really cool. I know there's some talk about whether it's canon or not. Um, but I, I really like the idea of you know the playing as a guardian and just shredding enemies um, and uh, just um, the the themes and more of the same. I, I really enjoyed the game. Um, I didn't get too awfully tired of it. Um, I just kind of stopped playing after a certain point where I was like, well, I'm not really going to get every mission done. Um, maybe I did. I don't. I don't even remember where I left off. I know there's a couple things I still need to do in the game, but I felt pretty satisfied and. I'm ready for the DLC to pick back up again. Um, they're being really coy about like what they're actually doing with these DLC packs, so I'm wondering why if they just haven't decided what they're going to do, or if there's actually going to be a story or something in the second DLC pack. But I'm locked in either way. All right. Um, so the next announcement: Banjo Kazooie One and Two Remaster. <laughs> Jacob did not fall for that. Oh, man. All right. I thought he would a little bit. Oh, well. Um, so I'll just mention a, a few quick things that were not on the list that I was looking at. Uh, Doom Eternal is apparently getting DLC. I think that's what that is. Um, and let's see. I'll just mention a few other quick things. Uh, Tony Hawk, like you guys mentioned. So that's pretty cool. Astria Ascending. I have no idea what that is. Uh, Worms Rumble. No, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, did any of you guys want to say anything about those? No, no, I think the Doom DLC is already out on all the other platforms. It is, it uh, is. It's, it's, so, yeah. it's, it's good, it's very difficult. I played it on Xbox One, but it is good. But all I have to say about any of that, always yeah. an afterthought on Switch. I'm happy about it, it. Is. Uh, happy about you know, 
Tony Hawk, you know, showing off. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely getting that for sure. But we already knew about that kind of, you know, it was already out there about it. Um, you know, I've got friends who really like the Worms series, so I hope that that uh, lives up to their expectations and hopes. Uh, but uh, it's not yeah. something that I've ever really gotten into. All right. Uh, well, the next announcement was another huge surprise. Uh, they will be releasing a another Game & Watch that is themed after The Legend of Zelda. And it comes with uh, Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Link's Awakening, which was something I never would have expected. And also like a remake of uh, a former uh, Game & Watch game. So that was pretty interesting. Um, I think I'll get it just because like it looks really cool. And um, I've just never gotten around to playing uh, Link's Awakening, like the original Game Boy one. So I think it would be a good way for me to do that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that was very, very unexpected, like I said. So... Uh, yeah, it's just cool that they're like continuing this like gaming watch line, and hopefully we'll get even more. Watch, you getting it, Kyle? Oh yeah, day one purchase. Uh, I don't know if it was any of you guys. I I mentioned it to someone. I was like, man, uh, Zelda game and watch with just the first Zelda would be way better than the Mario one. Yeah, just because there's a lot more. Uh, meat to the original Zelda game. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then they go and give us Zelda 1, 2, and Link's Awakening. Uh, yeah. I think I wish they would have done like Mario 1, 2, and 3 now in retrospect. Oh, she, yeah. The, the game, game the, the land game, for yeah. sure. So, yeah, I'm a, that's a day one buy for me as soon as it goes live on Amazon. Pre ordering it. I am very, very, very excited for this. I did not get the Game & Watch for Mario until later. I don't plan on opening it, let it be a collectible. Um, now this, when I get this one, I, I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'm definitely getting it day one. Um, I am disappointed, though, that the, this is the only thing they are going to do in regards to Zelda's 35th anniversary. Uh, but hey, we can t we'll take what we can get. Um, but I'm excited for this. This looks... Really cool. Very, very glad that this is coming out. Um, maybe it's the spitefulness in me, but I'm kind of glad they're not going all out for Zelda. Uh, just because I always feel like we're force-fed Mario and Zelda all the time, and uh, I just kind of get sick of it, I guess. Um, so I mean, I I am indifferent on that. Um, I don't know if I'll get it. I mean, I got the Mario one, and I just said to myself, like I knew it would, and this would probably just sit on my shelf, you know. So maybe I will. I ended up getting that Mario one as a last ditch, like Christmas gift that I asked for, and um, you know, and it's fun to mess around with. But again, it just sits there. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So I bought the the Mario one myself. Um, I thought it was a Cool little collectible. It could use a little more content. I definitely feel like they could have fit a little more on there. I think the screen looks really good on it. I mean, it's, it's a little small and hard on my eyes, but I did play through the original Super Mario Brothers on there a couple times just because. Um, what was it? I think they included Ball on that one as well. So that was that was all right. Um, the clock features look cool, but that's kind of one of those things like I don't really leave it propped up anywhere and like leave it up as a clock. I think if I did, it like went to sleep anyway. Um, now, I mean, with this one, it does seem to be a little bit better of a value with the original Legend of Zelda, which I very much like. Two is one of the only Zelda games I haven't beaten. Um, I'll probably joke and say that I'll finally do it with this. If there's no save states. If there's no save states, then no, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, is there yeah, really not? I wouldn't think. There were save states in the... In the I can't remember. Was there? Yeah, I thought I so. I don't think there was. But you could, like... Put it in sleep mode and reason it. Yeah. 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 Well, so they, you had like infinite lives mode. Link's Awakening, and if this has infinite lives, that'd be nice. I hate getting game over version two. It's the one reason I just said Yeah. That. But anyway, with Link's Awakening, um, I love that game. I don't know why they didn't do the DX version. Seems a little weird just to kind of leave out a couple little things, but so cool it's there. Um, I think I saw Mole as the Game Boy Advance game with like a Link picture, which I think they have a Zelda game in Watch. I don't know why. I didn't put that game in there, but that's fine. Um, but it looks pretty cool. I can't really say no to it after getting the Mario on when this one seems to be the slightly better deal. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, I like how the, I think the packaging comes with, like, doubles as a display case. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, this one's probably not something I'm going to get, just because 
don't need another collectible book. So. I still have uh, Link's Awakening for the GBA, a copy of that. So mm. I never beat it because I literally just kept picking up rupees <laughs> to buy stuff. <laughs> I just got addicted to picking up rupees. So um, maybe that's what's getting me to actually beat the game. Um, but no, I think the Zelda design looks better. Zelda's always had that very good aesthetic to it. So I think this one's going to be a little bit more popular than the Mario one. So it, I think it's going to be a little bit harder to find. But besides that, it looks like a good pickup. Uh, so yeah, I got the first game watch, the Mario one. I really loved it. I kind of like the whole screensaver function with the time on it. So I'm interested to see what the Zelda one does with that. I'm definitely going to try to get the Zelda one. They definitely have a lot more content on it. So yeah, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I picked up the Mario one. Uh, so I'm probably gonna get the Zelda one. Now in my market up where, where we live, our Walmart had like a dozen of the Mario Game & Watches sitting in the display case for mm -hmm. months. So if the, the Zelda one's a similar way, I might not rush out to pick yeah. this one. I am excited about this, actually. Um, I am excited to play one again. I'm excited to play two again on, on this one. Watching it. It's such a crisp screen. If they use the same thing they did for the Mario one, I love that. And the sound is great, too. Um, and then I also really I mean, I'm going to love just hearing, you know, Link's Awakening in, in that you know that sound uh, coming from it was, it was it was beautiful on yeah, it was. on the Mario one. It, it sounded great. It looked great, and so like experiencing that kind of definitive edition of, of these classic games um, in, in in a weird way, you know. But and I'm hoping that we get that like, get a couple of filters on that Link's Awakening, uh, potentially see it maybe in color, but also like have the classic Game Boy maybe. Or, or, you know, it looked like they were definitely doing the classic Game Boy look, but if they pull up that green ish look, it'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it's got a lot of potential, and I love the games they included in there. It's definitely something I really want to pick up, and I'm definitely being more interested by far in this than I can the Mario one. Neato. Also, the D-pad on the Game & Watch is like really good. I kind of wish that was like on all of their devices, including the Switch, because the Switch one's just awful. But yeah, that was a really cool surprise. Uh, next up, well, actually, that's all the announcements. That's it. No, I'm kidding. Um, Breath of the Wild 2 was finally revealed and actually revealed. I honestly wasn't really sure if they were going to show something, but in the end, I was just like, no, you have to. Like, it's been in development for a while, and um, what's his name? Anuma kind of, like, confirmed that. He's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's been in production for a while, and, it's, and everything's going very smoothly. So, uh, yeah, it was a great trailer. Um, I wish they showed more of it, but it's cool to kind of like get an idea of where they're going with this. Um, I think I think that uh, Link's design is pretty interesting. Uh, he's apparently the Winter Soldier with his uh, new metal arm, so that's pretty interesting. Um, but it's just going to be really cool to see like how they take what many people consider to be the greatest game ever made and make it even better. So. You know, the, the, the bar is set very high for this game, um, but I think they can do it. I think that they can really deliver and make this uh, an awesome game. And it's also pretty cool that, like, they're releasing Skyward Sword before this comes out because they're going with, like, this uh, sky theme with this one as well. So that's something I didn't really see coming because in the original trailer from two years ago, it looked like everything was going to be, like, underground. So... I wonder if there is going to be like an underground and above ground and sky element to it or, you know, uh, I'm curious to see where they're going with this. But uh, it was a nice little teaser. Um, I honestly have barely played Breath of the Wild. I think I'm one of the very few people in the world who can say that. Um, it's just I haven't gotten around to it for whatever reason, but um, I really should. And uh, I'm very happy for everyone who's excited for this game. Kyle. Yeah, I thought it it looked fantastic. I'm, I've been uh, following along on Twitter all the theories so far, and uh, it, uh, yeah, I, I was I noticed in the trailer how Link's hair like changes length and stuff, and it looks like it'll be doing some kind of time traveling and traveling between the sky and the ground, and maybe you even go underground too. 
Yeah. Uh, can't wait for 2022. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. Um, I'm a huge Zelda fan. That's the biggest thing I care about. Um, I feel like they gave us a nice little teaser enough to whet the appetite a little further, uh, just like the one they did in 2019. Um, I also like that uh, they're kind of bringing back the whole sky element with them. Uh, maybe we'll even possibly see the return of a Loftily. Who knows? Mm. I think that'd be very interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like they gave us just enough to whet our appetite, but I really want more. I, I want to know the title. Uh, I, I can't wait for 2022. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, with Kyle, a lot of people are just this is the fun part when you get something like this. People just speculate and wonder what's to come. What are we? What are we really seeing here? And um, my hypothesis is I think Zelda is going to die at the beginning. Um, if I see her fall down that pit, and then you see that little stone that to me it looked a lot like the time stones from uh, Skyward Sword. <laughs> Interesting Skyward Sword references, and I could see maybe having to somehow go to the past and undo her death. Or you play as her underground. I saw, I saw that too. Someone or, suggested or that. Or she's on ground and you play as Link. In the sky. Or you play as Ganon in the sky, you play as Link. Mm. In the middle middle okay. earth or whatever. Yeah. And Zelda underground. That's it's, cool. It's interesting for sure. You play know. as the three, what would be cool? The, the Triforce, I guess. Well, that would be cool. Um, yeah, you know, overall, it's, it's exciting. Uh, just like everyone else, we want to see more. We want, we want to know more, but it was cool to see an update on it. And um, yeah, I loved everything about it. So except for the, the ending, they just kind of held there for like 20 seconds. So it's a floating castle. But um, I had more to say. I just forget what I wanted to say. But yeah, it's cool. It's exciting. Josh? Yeah, I mean, I always love Zelda. It's almost consistently amazing. Um, it's one series that it manages to pull that off for the most part. Breath of the Wild was awesome, so I'm obviously excited about this sequel. Um, I still feel like we have a ton of questions. I wish I could have answered a little bit more. Maybe at least given us a title when we talk about it instead of just being the sequel to Breath of the Wild or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested in it. I'm excited to see if they pull out more new stuff. That time stone-looking move was pretty cool. Um, to kind of notice Link seem to be looking a little different in different places. So don't know if that means much of anything other than costumes, but we'll find out. Definitely excited for it. Seems like another great one that could be in 2022. That seems like that could turn out to be a really good year. Uh, so it's amazing. I mean, this is what we've been waiting for for the last few years is getting to see more of this game. Um, pretty awesome to see it up in the sky. Yeah. Um, everything. Looks great. Uh, can't wait to play this. Robbie can't wait to play the first one. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's better. So yeah, I have last Zelda game I played all the way through was Twilight Princess. I put eighty hours into that, so that was pretty, you know, fun uh, game. I when I got my Switch, I put like over four hundred twenty hours into <laughs> Let's Go Eevee. Oh my! And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I have been meaning to get around to playing the first one. Like, I'm interested in stuff in it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I've been playing other things, so yeah. I probably should, before this game comes out, before the, before the sequel comes out, I probably should at least get it played through. Uh, yeah, definitely interested to see where they're going to go with the plot. There's already a million theories on the internet about everything that's going on from Link's long hair meaning that he's like some sort of version of the link and stuff <laughs> like that so yeah they they didn't give us a lot of uh, story information but they definitely made it look like they're going to make the large breath of the wild world even larger including the sky area so it'll definitely be fun to explore it yeah that's the one thing for me is yes breath of the wild could have used a better story and i'm hoping that that's what they give us in breath of the wild too yeah but i don't want to lose that sort of open worldness Breath of the Wild was a game that I, I I haven't felt that way about a game since I played Skyrim back in you know, 2012 when I got my first Xbox. So, so it's like uh, I don't you know I want I want the new game to live up. I don't it doesn't have to be the same. It just has to have you know 
the majesty of the first Breath of the Wild. First Breath of the Wild, that you come out of the cave and you stand on the cliff and it's one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen in a video game. And I want to recapture that whilst, you know, while it being its own thing. Uh, so many ideas and theories came from this when I watched it. Um, you know, Return to the Skies, uh, throw back to the first, you know, the start of the legend with the Skyward Sword. Um, makes me think that maybe, uh, you know, Ganon releasing his reincarnation or his ability to do that uh, suggests maybe he lets go of power or maybe like the power of Demise is released. So maybe Demise is, uh, is the villain and Ganondorf is maybe, you know, trying to fight against help heroes. Who knows? Um, we may just see like maybe with, maybe it is Ganondorf that we're up against, you know, or, or some, some power. But it seems like the, the power that is Demise or something We'll see something come from that that is beyond Ganondorf, possibly. Um, but you know, who knows? Been the big bad, but you know, demise suggests that, that was that was the origin. So and it, it's going back to the origin by going back to the sky. Uh, so I I just have some theories, some ideas here that uh, it, it'd be pretty cool. Um, you know, I this suggests possibly that the uh, divine beasts are disabled um, because you could just fly you know up to the islands with the palmetto if that was the case. Um, but I'm still pretty like optimistic about uh, this game being just as epic, if not more so, uh, and still capturing the magic of the first one, um, and just having more to do, uh, more to explore. I'm, I'm wondering if they're gonna compartmentalize somewhat and not be so open world, but I think that would be a missed opportunity and missing the point. Um, but it'd be interesting to give that world more variety, and also the fact that like there's floating islands and stuff suggests that like there's gonna be big holes in the ground. Uh, from so those new places to explore underground, possibly um, where those things were, were housed initially, um, or where there, you know, where did the shrines pop up from? Like maybe there, you got the underground stuff, plus you've got above. Like there, there's a lot of options they can go with it. Um, but they did first and foremost show that you know the sky was a big big theme, um, and more so than just the paraglider. Like there's it's gone from like a 2D plane to like 3D plane where. Uh, it, it's become more like the sky's the limit and you can go anywhere and it's even more so than that. Uh, taking that Breath of the Wild playground and just, uh, you know, expanding on that, pretty cool. I just hope they get the music and the story right. Well, um, that's actually one of the things you see in the, uh, what they showed us is the castle, like Hyrule Castle floating into the sky. So I think is going to happen is it's going to be like cataclysm event, like flower, like it's going to reshape the map we, you know, you guys know, I haven't played this one, but and it's going to just put elements in the air that were previously in the air, and like, you're, you're going to, yeah, you're going to have huge holes and stuff, and then you're going to have to you know, you traverse in different ways and things that's going to be, like, familiar but unfamiliar at the same time. I don't know. From what I see the pictures on the internet, people are already starting to match up the places in the trailer to the uh, places in Breath of the Wild, so it doesn't look like anything that was in Breath of the Wild 1 was floating up in the air. So hopefully the sky is just all a completely new area. I will say, too, um, before we close out here, that I felt like the game, maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I felt like the game looked better than Breath of the Wild. I kind of feel like we were seeing some Switch Pro footage there. Um, that's my opinion. I thought it looked really, really interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm curious. 2022 seems to be the future for some pretty-looking games. So back to you, Chris. All right. Uh, well, that's all of the announcements. Um, I think it would be a great time for us to kind of share our thoughts on the Direct as a whole and kind of give, like, our own rating for it. Um, so I guess I'll start. Honestly, I think I'm going to give it an A. Um, it's one of my favorite directs, maybe even my favorite ever. Um, it didn't have like everything that I wanted, and it, from like other directs have had things that interested me interested me a little bit more, um, like with you know the banjo announcement and some other things. But like I think overall, this was exactly what I wanted, and even more. We got a two D Metroid. We got the return of WarioWare. We got the return of Advance Wars. Uh, we got a Breath of the Wild sequel um, reveal. Well, not reveal, but like you know, more of it shown. Um, I I have really no complaints. I wish there was like some type of like three D Mario 
type of thing uh, shown, but like, I can't be too picky. But at the same time, now that I think of it, there is no 3D Donkey Kong game. Um, so that's interesting. Um, but honestly, I don't care. Like 2D Metroid, that's like, if I had to pick something, that would be like my number one thing. Um, so yeah, I give it an A. Kyle. Uh, I will give it a C. C? Yeah, maybe a C plus. I had a lot of, let's say, B tier games for me mm. that I really like. Obviously, anytime you get a Metroid, that's a huge deal. And any uh, Metroid is an A tier game, in my opinion. But I don't know. I feel like they've had, even, even with the pandemic, they've had about two years to give us something huge for Christmas this year. And as of right now, it's Advanced Wars. And I doubt <laughs> that's the Christmas title. I'm going to buy it, but, you know, <laughs> that's not my Christmas vacation game. So I'm hoping that they didn't want it to get their Christmas game to get buried in E3 and it's going to basically get its own announcement, kind of like Paper Mario. And I think maybe Hy did Hyrule Warriors get its own, or was that in a direct? In a direct. Age of Calamity. It was its own direct, I think. Or no. Was it Twitter dropped? It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was Twitter Yeah, dropped. well, I'm, I'm hoping that's why we don't have a Christmas game yet. It's because they're going to just rando drop uh, Donkey Kong or some big game. And yeah, yeah. It's just going to blow up. It's going to be like. Give up the direct in August. Yeah, Thursday like. Thursday morning. Yeah, and they'll blow up the internet and everybody will be talking about it and pre ordering it instead of it getting lost in the mix of 30 games they announced. So. Yeah, I'll go with the C plus. Well, I will give the direct a C plus plus if that's such a thing. Um, there was a lot of thing that wasn't for me, but obviously that's called a B minus. When you put it that way, I don't know, it sounds a little too high. <laughs> Some, okay, a B minus. Um, we, there was a lot that wasn't for me, um, but I am glad that. People have got are getting something that they can like, uh, like Advance Wars, for example. Look really for me back in the day, but I think that looks great. Um, I think Metroid looks really awesome. Obviously, I'm excited for uh, the Age of Calamity DLC, and can't wait for 2022 for Breath of the Wild 2. Um, it was it was pretty decent overall. Obviously, I, I think it could use a little more, uh, but it was good. Uh, my predictions as far as any other directs we would have. Later in the year, I think maybe I'm just spitballing here. Maybe we'll get one around November. I don't know. And if the Switch Pro is going to be announced, maybe it'll be announced then, or maybe they'll say that for March of next year. And then it'll be like 2017 all over again, hmm. which would be really awesome. Um, so here's to hoping. Yeah, I thought the direct was pretty decent. Um, nice game there, Chris. I uh. I want to give it a B. I really enjoyed myself pretty much throughout the whole thing. I remember the last one with Banjo. Banjo was the hive. I mean, it, it blew me away. But I remember the rest of the direct, I was just feeling annoyed. And I did not was not impressed at all with half of what they showed. Um, this time, I felt like, man, there was a overall... I thought there was a lot of good stuff. I'm just really happy. I, of course, I'm ecstatic about Metroid, but I'm I'm happy to see games like WarioWare come back, Advanced Wars. Like they're just really dipping into the past of games that we've wanted back, but they've just been for some reason too scared to give a shot, you know. And to me, this is just there's a lot of there's a lot here. And um, overall, I thought they did a good job. They showed us Breath of the Wild. They, Give us to wet our appetites just a little bit longer. Um, and I will say, you know, I, with you, I was really hoping, I'm wearing, I'm wearing Donkey Kong gear. I was really hoping that 3D Donkey Kong game would get announced. Um, especially when they had the Mario Odyssey director uh, as part of the one of the hosts for the show. I thought for sure it happened. However, you know, they did say that they they had games that they chose not to, to show off today and that they'll, that they'll reveal at a later time. So, you know, it makes sense. Nintendo, E3 is not what it was, you know, 10 years ago, Nintendo has directs now, and we, uh, 
they have to spread some love out around for those other directs. So who knows? Uh, I still don't believe we know what the holiday game is. And I think we'll figure that out um, in a direct here within a, m a month or two. So overall, I give it a B. I am, I'm walking away happy. And I think Nintendo had the best presentation of E3 this year. Josh. Yeah, so I'm going to echo some of what you all said, I guess. I, I would give it a, a B. Um, I think if... I think if Mario and Rabbids, that announcement was made for this and stuff, oh, yeah. you saw correct, I think that would knock it up to like an A minus for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, outside of that, I think they, for one, I think the direct itself, like they kept a good, decent flow. I don't feel like they sat on something for 10 minutes like they've done in the past. Um, so I, I think, again, like, sort of consistently kept me interested. There was some, definitely some good solid games in there for me, just sprinkled throughout. Um, even this, we're, right now, as we're speaking, the three houses on that Advance Wars are showing, and it looks really good. It wasn't something I considered in the past, but uh, I like that. Didn't expect that at all. Um, Metroid, that looks awesome. Um, maybe I'm forgetting some of it. Mario Party, that, that looks fun enough. There's just a lot of a lot of good, solid, I think Kyle said it, a lot of good B-tier games in there, so to speak. But, you know, you also had, like, the sequel to Breath of the Wild at the end of it. Um, we're... For me, like the Smash character, um, I keep up with that stuff a lot. I don't know why. It was a little disappointing just because I feel like there are a lot of characters that should be there that are missing. But basically, they're all Western created characters. And if we're just going to pretend like we live in a world where they don't exist, I guess the addition they made was unoffensive. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not bad, though. Not bad at all. Anyone else? Or Jesse? I, I'm going to give it a C, uh, just based on us only getting two new games announced. There's some remasters or whatever, but um, I mean, Metroid Dread looks really good. But overall, I mean, I felt like it was kind of lackluster, especially for E3. Uh, Would have been a good, good normal direct, uh, but I guess I'm kind of let down. And it's uh, E3, and that's what we got. So. I mean, with the way E3's been going this year, Nintendo could have just throwed Mario Rabbids and probably still done better than most of the people love. So it's true. Um, I would give it a B minus. Um, the pacing was weird. Like, had they backloaded Metroid, if that had been the one more thing, I think people would have been so hyped for that. Like, people are still hyped, obviously, but. The way they presented it, it kind of got in there in the middle and stuff, and it's like to like carry you through to the end. Like it felt like they preloaded Smash, getting through all the junk, then Metroid, and here's a whole bunch more junk, and then Zelda. And like they, they just shouldn't have done it that way. It just it ended up softening the impact of the things that were actually there and were actually like they could have even done those in their separate thing, like done the third parties as a separate thing, like they have been with the partner showcases done a, you know, less time, I don't get, take less time to show some of the stuff they're showing in the Treehouse. Like, the Treehouse showed us some really cool stuff for Metroid and things. Like, I'd rather have seen that in the presentation than, you know, have to wait for the Treehouse, but they will still want to promote the Treehouse, so it's understandable. But it's definitely not, like, bad. It's just awkward. Like, they could have done much better, but especially compared to everything, like, that's happened this year, like, they're doing better than the most, so you know they're going to get points for that. They don't have to show their A game when no one else is. Like they can come with their B game and still do better than everyone else. So why come with your A game? Like, so, and I don't think like reasonably, I don't think we were getting our holiday special this year. We weren't getting that holiday game because that is going to be something that's like in August or September, three months out. They'll announce it, and then boom, we're going to have it. And, you know, I, I think that was a reasonable, you know, it was a reasonable thing to think. It was a hope that we'd get that announcement in E3. So, yeah, I definitely, we're going to get something in September or August that will have, you know, what people actually are craving and stuff. And then we'll just, you know, get, you know, right now we just have to be patient and, you know, see how it goes. Uh, so my overall rating, I'd probably say is a C as well. Uh, big news, the big E3 news was the Metroid Dread and, uh, 
I say probably the Zelda game and watch. Uh, nothing else either felt new or exciting. I right. didn't really care about any of the characters or anything like that mm-hmm. that were released for Smash. Uh, <clears throat> so I'd say C, but it's probably mm-hmm. still the best uh, E3 presentation compared to the other companies. Yeah. Overall, I think I'd uh, I'd grade you know if I grade it the same way I grade my students, I'd say a B minus. A lot of good with a little bit of bad mixed in. Um, none of the games really were for me. In that in that way, I would say you know I think uh, comparing it to the other to the other people, I think uh, Microsoft kind of sold the show with with their Obsidian and uh, Bethesda games that they announced. But overall, I think Nintendo had a better E3. Nintendo had more to offer. They had more variety. They had more content that, that was coming and coming soon. I feel like uh, a lot of the other developers are like, oh, yeah, this is all coming next year, and <laughs> three years from now, and five years from now. Uh, so overall, so let's say B minus. Uh, I'm happy that people are getting Metroid and Happy uh, that they've announced uh, this other Smash character, and we have one more to go. Anytime there's a Smash character, I'm, I'm happy. So. I've been wrestling with uh, going either plus or a minus um, you know kind of walking back and forth because metroid food stuff there quite a bit so i'm gonna go a minus for everything um you know i got a lot of games that i was interested in yeah. uh, a lot of and i like looking at all the other directs or all their other videos that they had um i i, I give like as far as a nintendo direct goes um I, i'd probably give it a b plus but like for like e3 overall like a minus like for everything like i think they had the most variety that they offered for for like they're kind of for everybody else. Um, they're not like the big shooters. They're not the big like you know graphical in your face like gory or intense or anything like that. Um, but they've got a lot of variety for other games and, and a lot of uh, they always bring something for everybody. And I think they did a pretty good job here. There's a few things that I would like to see more of, like just in general like puzzle games. It's not just like shooter puzzle or something like that. But um, you know it's really cool to see them you know pull this out and uh, show us some more stuff that we've been clamoring for. Uh, I think this just whets my appetite uh, a little bit, but even then, I feel like I'm going to crave Metroid Prime 4 so much more, and I'm so ready to see what they do with that with all the team they have behind it. And so I'm glad that we're getting a Metroid Dread and finally getting a continuation of the story. Um, and just the fact that they showed that off at Treehouse and they showed it off actually in the direct this time instead of just like, you know, after yeah. the fact, you know. Um, and got Amiibo that look beautiful. So yeah, A minus, I think, um, just overall E3, um, and then just for out of Nintendo Directs, they probably a B plus. Very cool. Yeah, you definitely, Ryan. This hit a lot of your uh, your areas today yeah. for sure. Congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan won E three this year. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean that's all my thoughts. Um, I don't know. I'm leaving today better than I was this morning. Um, every. I, you know, we all know that feeling of waking up and it feeling like Christmas all over again and uh, just getting like this bombardment of announcements of things that we've been wanting to hear about and finally getting to see it. We finally saw Metroid Dread. We finally saw Breath of the Wild 2. We saw Advanced Wars. We saw Monkey Ball. We saw WarioWare. There's all these things and something that they stress during the direct which i think is really important is that there's something for everyone so even though you didn't uh you may not have loved every single announcement i'm sure there's at least one thing that really spoke to you and that might have gotten you really excited uh for the rest of the year so um and also there's more to come there's going to be more announcements it's not like this is the last announcement of the year so it'll be cool to see how they follow up this uh follow up with this uh, direct so uh yeah that's those are my final thoughts did you guys have anything else you wanted to add i'm good um i'm just really excited that you know we've got this uh this a lot to look forward to and we still have a lot that we need to know about coming up later this year what games are nintendo going to fill in i uh, will probably get another direct in the next couple of months um so that could be as big uh, but i'm excited to see what nintendo has in the future i'm really glad what they've given us now um and i'm definitely uh Definitely dreading the next few months uh, in a positive way. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> yes, not bad at all. Very inoffensive <laughs> direct, a very, very solid one. All righty. Well, lead us out, Chris. 
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we had a great time kind of reminiscing about E3. Um, I hope that today was just as special for you guys as it was for us. Um, if you wanted to send us an email, you can send us an email at nintendonostalgiain at gmail.com. And we're all over social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now TikTok. And if you wanted to leave us a voicemail, you can do that at 317-969-5690. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Later, everyone. Later, what are you guys going to be doing? Yeah, we saw your dad. Now that's, I don't know who that is. That's some guy who's going to kill me. The janitor that keeps following me around. We're all trying to get Metroid here, man. I know, bro. <laughs> the Amiibos and the collectors. You're so good. my wife on Facebook? <laughs> Actually, she's right here with me. Here. Hey, oh, hi. Oh, out of town. <laughs> it's her birthday. Oh, oh no. <laughs> This is all I'm recording. Don't worry, that will not be the code for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Danielle?